What's up everybody, welcome back to another music making tutorial. I am Clormo and today I'm going to be talking about the Vintage Tube EQ, which is also part of the Vintage EQ collection that Logic Pro X introduced with Logic 10.4. And as with the other two Vintage Collection EQs, the console and the graphic EQ, this is a very good uh, EQ to use. I personally don't know which one I'm going to be concentrating the most, but they have their advantages and disadvantages, like I have said in the past, but overall pretty good to use them and start inventing and testing them out, especially if you are a beat maker and you like to make your, your sounds a little bit more older, feel a little bit more older. So with that out of the way, let's just start right away with the with what we came to do here. So this is how the Vintage Tube EQ looks. And just for as a refresher, you can find it in your audio effects plugins. Go to EQ, Vintage EQ Collection, Vintage Tube EQ. This is how it looks. The purpose of the Vintage EQ, as you have learned with the other two that I have discussed, it's also emulating some old vintage console that was developed but in the 50s, 60s, 70s, this one specifically was in the, in the 50s. So it emulates actually two different EQ units that usually came together. And the top one, it's imitating the EQP1A and then the one at the bottom, it's a MEQ5. You should be seeing a graphic overlapping. You will see that you look exactly the same. Can't just fit it on this. Uh, on this left portion here because uh, as you can see it's big enough that it's going to take some of the screen but anyways that's besides the point and those units that are actually still in use today I think they have been out of production for for decades but you you have people that have real studios and and have acquired them through the years I don't know how much uh, they would go nowadays but probably very expensive pieces of equipment uh, but they are very sought after and, and people love them. And there's one specific reason why that is. And, and pay attention to this because I want you to, after seeing this video, go learn a little bit about that on your own. Is that the, this EQ is based on um, valve based analog design. So it is a lossless passive equalizer. That's the main point here. It's a passive EQ. So we... <laughs> Pretty much any passive EQ, in specifically this one, which was um, which is based on the Poltec uh, technology or consoles. Passive EQ means that the signal level remains constant even if the EQ is switched out. So the musical quality of the filters it's in high regard. In layman's terms, what I can tell you is that you can pretty much be very aggressive with this EQ and not sound like unfazed or unnatural. You can really be very aggressive with this EQ. So that, I think it's the main point that you want to take out of this. And the main reason why beat makers that like that low end to be um, up front and be more prominent, this is, I think, out of the three that we have discovered uh, or that I have covered, I should say, this one is probably the one that's going to give you the best end result if you want to concentrate on the low end and, you know, those dirty, muddy or uh, lower frequencies, very, very low end. You can bring them up front without sounding unnatural. So with that uh, being said, and I guess that's a, a little bit of a good... Um, like history lesson right there. Go search that on your own a little bit more if you want to learn more. But the controls here are pretty simple. Still, you have more more parameters to deal with, but they're very simple in my opinion. You still have your output, same as the vintage and uh, console and graphic EQs, just a drive knob. Then your output model is going to match your by default, the EQ that you're dealing with, but you have you can combine it with the other two. You have your face, your volume. Always, always look at your uh, presets because they're good to start learning a little bit more and easing those fears of working with EQing. And 
but anyway the parameters that we have we have a low end uh, region or a low frequency region we have a high frequency region on the top portion or the, or the eqp 1a from Poltec, and then you also have a low and high end at the meq5 but you also have a dip frequency area this is just analogous to the attenuation area that you're going to have on the high and low ends um, so what else does that let us do so you might be saying okay so the 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 up module or console has already low and, and high ends so what else do i need really the lower portion is going to let you reach more for those mids but it's also going to let you create very complex curves because you can um kind of go into the same frequency and kind of boost it and cut it at the same time which is very um very unique of this uh, eq and it's B opens a lot of creative possibilities which is something that i always like you know when i'm using plugins in Logic pro x that it doesn't constrain me too much even though it looks constraining so in 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 essence you have you can set your center frequencies for your low and high end and then you have a bandwidth knob which is gonna let you set the q these are all everything that you see from zero to ten it's just like uh, percentage wise but in reality the how how high you can go how high you can boost or attenuate your signal on both the low and the high end frequency varies so and this is not very obvious from here so on the low end you can uh, boost up to 13.5 decibels you can attenuate or cut up to 17.5 decibels and then on the high side, you can boost up to 18 decibels and you can attenuate or cut down to 16 decibels. Now, um, and that's pretty much it there. Everything else is just frequency where you wanna boost or cut, right? And then on the low area or, or the low console here, uh, on the the bottom, I should say, I don't wanna confuse you with the term low, you have, um, the same thing so for peaks you can go on the low end up to 10 and the high you can uh, go up to eight and then the dip this is like the the wild card here this can go up to 10 as well but look at the range of frequencies that i can cover so right here i can uh, reach for my mids and i can also reach for my lows and if i want to attenuate those i can do that but if you just want to be talking about boosting, then you just concentrate on these on you know these knobs that that you have here, the peaks and the boost areas, and then leave the same the, the others untouched. It will give you pretty good results in my opinion. So let's just demo that right away. So I still have the same beat. And I'm just gonna try to uh, make that low end more prominent, and you can see how easy it is. In my opinion, this I wanna actually wanna take this one to up the the less muddier portion. So you see how aggressive I'm being here, and I'm not kind of not losing too much of the sound. And then on the on the bottom, I'm gonna try to. This is in kilohertz, remember or pay attention to that so i don't want to go too high because i'm gonna be out even outside this frequency range so i want to concentrate on the muddier maybe that was too aggressive but you get the idea so now if i want to attenuate like the hi-hats i can can do that there make the low end even more prominent Maybe that's a little bit too aggressive. So maybe I want to also boost a little bit more where the snare would be. Uh, the snare might be here, let's see. Yep. 
and I know this only because I have seen this so many times on the channel EQ that I kind of know where in the frequency range the snare was at. So notice that I'm also making the snare now a little bit more prominent, but still that low end dominates. So it sounds better, even though I am doing everything on that drum loop, I should uh, refresh your memories. You, you want this to be separate instruments and do this type of edits that way. And then on a bus, on your mastering, you can just tweak a particular frequency range. So now let's, uh, let's see. Let's not attenuate anything on the upper one. But here, let's see. So yeah, that will make the snare again. I can probably go more aggressive here now. So that definitely sounds vintage to me, but it sounds, I think, good. You you don't have like results that are gonna um, impact your peak levels too much. Granted, I am right now that track is minus 18 decibels, so that's pretty generous. And you know, you at that point you can when you're mixing and mastering, you can go to your monitors and. Um, you know, just go a little bit crazier with the with the peak levels and stuff. But anyway, that's all there is to it as far as the controls and and all that. Again, do not forget about your 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 factory defaults or, or presets. They're always gonna help you see how things interact with each other and good entry level edits that you can do there just to get a hang a little bit more of the of the plugging and. You know, don't be afraid to use it. I hope you you got some value out of this video and understood what you can do here. So with that, I'm cutting the video. This is the last one of this mini series on the Vintage EQ collection. Next videos, I'm just going to keep going through some of the uh, 10.4 plugins or effects that I think are are valuable for beat makers in particular so that you learn some of those and start experimenting on your own and you know using them as soon as possible and if you haven't downloaded 10.4 please do so right away please because of a lot of things just this alone just it's worth it in my opinion and if this is the first time that you're watching me i would appreciate if you can support me by subscribing to my youtube channel Clormo, like this video, leave a comment, ask a question, share any other plugins or any other uh, experiences that you might have already with these uh, EQs or only EQ plugins out there that kind of achieve the same result or that are in particular good for beat makers. And if you want to keep up to date with everything else that I'm doing, just pay me a visit at clormoindustries.com. We can also chat over there and you can. Uh, see everything else that I put together weekly there. So I'll see you next time. Peace out, people.